We are uh, talking today with Tony Owens, the hatchery manager with uh, Texas Freshwater Fishery Center. And Tony, the Florida bass component is, is a big part of why fishing is good in Texas. And it starts right here with you guys spawning fish. About how many fingerlings do you raise a year at the hatchery? Well, it, it's varied over the years, but probably in the neighborhood of four and a half to five million here at, at TFFC. The, these fish that you use is brood fish. Now the process is kind of changing going forward to where you're going to be using the offspring of share lunkers through this whole process. Yeah. You don't collect brood fish every year like they do for the, the striper program, the hybrid program. Where do these fish come from and, and how long do they stay part of this? Well, uh, it's changed over the years. It, it's always changed. Uh, but most of our brood fish come from Florida. We get them from uh, Rich Loan Hatchery there in Florida. And what they do, they spawn them, they raise them, get them up to two years of age. And when they get to two years of age, then they ship them out to different hatcheries. And we try to keep them anywhere from two to 10 years. Because as they get older and bigger, they're, they're harder to handle. They're harder to, uh, you know, they get so strong and, and, and they're older, you know, they just can't take a lot of it, uh, take a lot of the stress with being handled. Now this isn't a process like someone's fish tank at the house. You got all sorts of little things going on here here with mats and stuff like mm -hmm. that. How long does it take for the, I mean, what, what is the purpose of all those? How long does it take these fish to spawn? How long before you move them out of here? We got a hundred pair in five raceways. Once they get, right now, these are getting close to being pulled out because they get, basically these females are averaging roughly three spawns a piece. The male will coax the female on, she'll deposit her eggs. And after that, the male runs her off, gets her out of the way. Well, as she's going, there'll be another male that'll get her and bring her up, she'll deposit some more eggs and he'll run her off. So when they start, you know, the spawns aren't as productive, you know, and, and what I mean by that, you can look at them and when you look at the look at the eggs, they'll be real white. Like the males aren't covering, they're not getting fertilized. It means basically they're getting spent. They're spent yeah. yeah, they're getting spent. So then that's usually our cue, what we'll do, we'll come up and pick them up in a little cart with water and we take the mats back to our hatching troughs and hang them up. And depending on water temperature, like at the beginning of the season, the water's a little bit cooler and it takes roughly 10 days for the eggs to fall off down to the bottom. Uh, basically they're fried, but they still have their, their yolk sac. Takes them a few days to absorb that and then probably within 10 days they're up. As soon as they, those guys swim up, we'll harvest them and put them in our production ponds. And we'll do that for roughly 30 days and our, our target size or what management requests us to have is 38 millimeters. So we're, we're doing that in about 30 days. How many fish fingerlings do you expect to produce to stock on the lakes around Texas this year? I, we're hoping we'll get around five million. And, and we, we might do better than that. It just depends. You know, I, I, I hate to, I always hate to look too far because I mean, it, every, every step in this whole process, I mean, you know, it's, it's like, man, you, you gotta get them to spawn and then you gotta get them to hatch and then you get them stocked and then you gotta get them to grow and then you gotta get them harvested, you know? So once we get in those ponds in the 30 days from now, you know, I start feeling a lot better. When you see them, you, you know, we got good returns, you get them on the trailer, you get them to the lake, you know? So it's, it's, it's a lot to keep up with. It's a lot of record keeping. Uh, there's, there's a lot more detail that goes into this than, you know, what most people realize. We just, and you know, you think, you think back, had former division director Bob Kent not had the foresight back in 1960s to put some of these in a sack and fly them back right. from Florida to the we, Tyler Hatchery. Yeah. We wouldn't we wouldn't be having these uh, 13 pounders and uh, and just the quality of fishing uh, you know that we have. I, I mean, uh, there's, there's all there's a good group of dedicated professionals that really work hard trying to provide. Uh, better fishing for everyone.